Then he said, giving of thanks, prayers, supplication, with giving of thanks. After you have given thanks, then establish the request. But before you bring the request to God, he said, the first thing I require of you is, he said, prayers and supplication, then give thanks. And after that, give thanks and then establish the request. Bring the petition before me, said the Lord, after you brought praise and you brought worship and you're giving thanks, then he will attend to the request when you come with thanksgiving. But then he said, be careful for nothing. He said, be careful for nothing but prayers and supplication is required. But prayers and supplication, be careful for nothing but in everything, in everything, prayers and supplication is required. You realize that when the challenges, we do everything. We are careful for everything. We worry about everything. We complain about everything. We are afraid of everything. We panic about everything. But the thing that is so critical that God commands us to do that we do not do. We don't do it. He said, be careful for nothing but in everything, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayers and supplication, with an attitude of gratitude, thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So what does it mean? It means that in these times, and in these challenging times we find ourselves in, that it is necessary, it is mandatory, and it is critical that you and I, Adopt a prayer life, not complaining, not a fearful life, not a life full of anxiety and worries and fears, but a life of prayer, a life of prayer <laughs> like never before. We need to live a life of prayer, not a life of anxiety, fear, and worry, but a life of prayer. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer, supplication, prayer, supplication, then come with thanksgiving, that irrespective of the situation that confronts us, and irrespective of what you are dealing with or going through, never stop giving thanks. That thanksgiving is required. There is something about giving thanks that is so powerful. There is something about giving thanks that is so powerful, even in trying times, even in difficult times. We must learn and cultivate the attitude of thanksgiving irrespective thanksgiving you are still here no matter what we must give thanks because that is a command it is a command that we give thanks irrespective then we can come before god with a request and i promise you i promise you no matter how long it takes answers will come Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed three times. Paul prayed three times on the same thing. Jesus prayed three times on the same thing. So we can't quit praying. We can't give up on praying because God commands us to pray. And it's because Adam ceded the dominion mandate to the adversary. And because he ceded that dominion mandate to the adversary, he placed the adversary in charge and in command of this world. Second Corinthians 4.4 4, And therefore make the adversary the God of this world. Now prayer was not necessary or required in the Garden of Eden. There was no need of prayer 
until Adam committed high treason and ceded the dominion mandate to the adversary. And as a result of that, prayer, therefore, has become necessary. It is only when we pray that heaven receives through our prayers the authorization to step into the affairs of man and to turn things around and to bring into alignment, to bring into alignment man to God's original purpose. That original intent is set in motion. We set it in motion. We reset God's original plan whenever we pray and intercede. But Jesus taught us corporate praying. And he said, when you pray, he said, when you pray, after giving thanks, then say, our Father. So he's teaching us corporate prayers, not to be praying for ourselves and not to pray individual prayers only, but learning to pray corporate prayers. Our Father. He said, our Father. Verse 3, forgive us. He kept on saying, forgive us. Forgive us. Give us this day. Give us day by day our daily bread. Us, us, corporate again. Corporate again, verse 4. Corporate again. Talking about forgiving us our sins as we forgive the sins of others. Corporate, lead us not us again into temptation, but deliver us again from evil. It's corporate. In the book of Acts chapter 12, the Bible said that Peter was kept in prison. And verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison. But the church, the church without fail, the Bible said, prayed without ceasing. The church, he didn't say an individual. He said the church. He didn't say individuals. He said the church. This is again corporate. And the church prayed. We are living in days and in times that the adversary is using the crisis confronting us to prevent corporate praying. Now, when I talk about corporate praying, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that you alone, as much as your prayers works, that it takes more than you, and it takes more than your prayers to deal with the present circumstances confronting us. You got to understand that. The Bible said that two shall put a thousand to flight. One shall put a thousand to flight, and two shall put ten thousand to flight. We need that connection. Jesus said, if two or three, he said, where two or three are gathered, where two or three are gathered, where two or three are gathered, there are mine in the midst of them. There am I in the midst of them. Jesus said, if two shall agree upon anything that they touch and ask of my Father, it shall be done unto them. So, he's talking about agreement, he's talking about corporate, and he's saying that one in the times we live in is not enough. Because there are so many individuals praying right now, and some of them are overwhelmed, they are afraid, they are, they are threatened, they are panicking, they are praying out of fear, they are praying out of fear, they are discouraged, they are disappointed, they are frustrated, they are weak, and there are so many things going on in the life of individuals, so, so many individuals' prayers have been weakened, some have been silent, they are not praying as they ought to pray, so, you need somebody, you need to connect with the body. You can't you can just be on your own. You need to connect with somebody. You can't stand alone. Connect. Connect with the brethren. Connect with the church. Connect with the brethren is very, very important. And I know that these are difficult times and sometimes it looks like the only safe thing one can do is to just stay in your bedroom, stay in your house, stay within your walls. That is great. It's good. But beyond all that, you still got to connect to pray. You still have to connect to pray. Because you can be in your house, not going anywhere, and a loved one or a friend can bring trouble to you.
if you don't pray. He can hit you. That's what the Bible says. They shall know evil before thee, neither shall any plague come now your dwelling. You got to enforce that scripture. That no plague will come now your dwelling. That plagues will not visit you. That and not just your dwelling, that but that no plague will come now you nor cross you at the marketplace, at the workplace, in town, at church, at home, it doesn't matter where you go, that no plague, no plague will befall you, that no evil will befall you, that in the name of Jesus you will not be a victim of this wicked enemy, that you will not be a victim of this conspiracy of this beast working through the COVID-19. What we are dealing with is not just COVID-19. We are dealing with an enemy hiding behind the COVID-19. It's a beast that is driving the COVID-19, working through COVID-19 as a vehicle to carry out his assignment to assassinate and take lives and to kill people prematurely. People that he had targeted a long time ago and he didn't have the access and the occasion to take them out. He's using COVID-19 to kill and to destroy people, <clears throat> hide behind COVID-19 and give impression. And people say, oh, it was the COVID-19. Oh, it was the virus. But it's not just COVID-19. These are people that the enemy targeted long time ago, Psalm 118. Psalm 116 verse 8. Psalm 116 verse 8. They were targeted long time ago. Targeted long time ago. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. It is a conspiracy of the powers of the dark kingdom. He planned it long time ago. And he's hiding behind COVID-19. Uh, and the reason also is because prayer is gone down. <clears throat> Individuals are struggling to pray as they ought to pray. And the only way for us to override this wickedness and, and these legions of demons that are, are, are loose all over the nations of the world and the cities and the communities of our world, it will require corporate prayers. It will require you connecting with somebody. It will require you connecting with the brethren, the church. Don't stand alone. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to stand alone. <clears throat> Follow the protocol. Use the mask wherever you go. Whenever you leave your house, use a mask. When you are with people, use a mask. Wash your hands. Keep the <clears throat> protocols. Keep it. Keep the protocols. Respect the protocols. It's very important. It's good for you, and it's good for your friends, and your family, and your loved ones. Yeah. Keep the protocols. Respect them. It will save your life. It will help you. But after all that, the Bible says, having done all to stand. After all that, you need to connect with somebody. You need to connect with the brethren. Don't stand alone. Don't try to be a hero. Don't try to be a superman or a superwoman. It's not going to work. What we are dealing with requires more than just your prayers and my prayers. It's going to require corporate praying. Praying with the brethren. Praying together. And that's why myself and my team have not left you. And we keep coming to you to, to give you the right of fellowship, to strengthen you, and to let you know that these are not the days to be a loner. Don't be a loner like something. Loners die alone. Irrespective of what your reason might be, don't be alone. The Bible said if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. You need others. You need the body. You need the church. You need the brethren. Don't stand alone. We are living in dangerous days. These are evil days. And the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He didn't say be strong in yourself. He didn't say be strong in your ideology or philosophy or logic. He didn't say be strong in your wisdom. He said be strong in the Lord. And so I came to challenge you to be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not in yourself, but in him. That is what it requires. Be strong in the Lord 
And in the power of his might is what is required. You need to connect with the brethren. And Jesus said the other day, he said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now in the name of Jesus, whatsoever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. So let the beast behind this COVID-19 be bound in the name of Jesus. By the authority and power of Jesus' name, let the beast that is riding, that is riding on the wings of COVID-19, let the beast that have deployed this COVID-19 as a weapon and a vehicle to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Be bound in the name of Jesus. 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 Bound in the name of Jesus. Be bound in the name of Jesus. Be bound in the name of Jesus. Bound in the name of Jesus. Right now. Let this killing spirit be bound in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let those who have been appointed to die. Mark and appointed to die. Let them be released. Let them be acquitted and discharged. Psalm 79 verse 11. Let the sign of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power. Preserve them. Preserve thou. Those or them that are appointed to die. There are people that have been marked and appointed to die before COVID-19 came. <clears throat> but the enemy tried all kinds of things. He couldn't make it happen. And he's using COVID-19 as a weapon and a vehicle to, to take vengeance and to execute lives, so many precious lives, irrespective of who they are. The enemy is out to kill, to steal, and to destroy. John 10.10, 10. that is what he does comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But in the name of Jesus, but in the name of Jesus, we command the release, we command the escape, and preservation of those appointed to die. Psalm 79 and verse 11. Let, let the sign, yea, of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power, he said, preserve thou those that are appointed to die, or deliver them, or loose them. Let those who have been appointed to die, let those whom the enemy has sentenced to die, or to death, be discharged, be acquitted and discharged. Let them be acquitted and discharged. Let them be released from premature death, released from untimely death. In the name of Jesus, on the account of the blood of Jesus, let the spirit of premature death be bound in the name of Jesus. Let spiritual assassins be bound in the name of Jesus. The spirit of fear be bound in the name of Jesus. Intimidations be bound in the name of Jesus. Threatenings be bound in the name of Jesus. Now let every demonic arguments that have been put out there to claim lives, to destroy lives, to kill people, let that argument be dismissed on the account of the blood of Jesus. We dismiss technicalities, we dismiss arguments, we dismiss legalities in the name of Jesus that have given the enemy the right to kill and destroy lives and to take lives, to take the lives of people in the name of Jesus. We block that agenda, we bind that agenda, let it be bound. Let it be bound. Bind it. Bind it. We 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 bind it. And in the name of Jesus, we lose the captives of death. We leave. We lose the captives of destruction. We lose the captives of spiritual assassins. We lose the captives of spiritual hijackers. We lose the captives of spiritual armed robbers. In the name of Jesus, we lose them right now. We lose the captives of fear. In the name of Jesus, let them be loose. 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 In the name of Jesus, let them be loose. For even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. And even the 
lawful captives shall be delivered. Today, in the name of Jesus, we command the release of those bound. We command the release of those appointed to die on the account of the blood of Jesus. We command their release. We command their escape. Let them be released. Let them escape on the account of the blood of Jesus who are appointed to die home and abroad in the name of Jesus. Within our walls, in the name of Jesus, domestic and external, on the account of the blood of Jesus, everyone around us, everyone that concerns us, appointed to die by coronavirus, by any kind of disease, affliction, or infirmity, in the name of Jesus, according to demonic arguments, technicalities, or verdicts, or legality, on the account of the blood of Jesus, let them be acquitted, let them be discharged, let them be released, let them go free, 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 in the name Jesus, let them be loose. Let them be loose. Now we command healing. We command the healing of the afflicted. We command the healing of the sick. Let those afflicted, let those afflicted, let those oppressed, and let those that are sick in the name of Jesus, wherever they might be. From homes to the hospitals. Hey, in the name of Jesus, wherever they might be, tied up to the bed of affliction, chained to the bed of affliction, tied to the bed of affliction and death, in the name of Jesus, on the account of the blood of Jesus, we deploy the prayers of the brethren and we send prayer and the word of the Lord to the hospital, to homes, to communities, to cities, to nations, and let those appointed to die at home, at home, at the hospital, wherever they are, let them be discharged and released from the bed of affliction right now in the name of Jesus. Release. Release them. Release them. Release them. Release them. Release them from the bed of affliction. Let them be released from the bed of affliction. Release from the bed of infirmity. Release from the bed of affliction in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. One of the things we want to also deal with, we want to deal with any life-threatening situation. People are taking refuge in their homes, minding their own business, not going anywhere, just staying at home to be safe, and trouble comes to meet them in the house. Today we are praying that whether you are in your house, or you go to work, or to the market, or to the hospital, or to church, or whatever. But in the name of Jesus, you and your family, you and your house, you and your loved one, will not encounter any life-threatening situation. You will not encounter any life and death situation. Today, in the name of Jesus, we bind every life-threatening situation, any life and death situation, in the name of Jesus. We vanquish any such thing within your walls, in your going out, in your coming in, where your children, where your husband, 
where your wife, where your loved ones are concerned on the account of the blood of Jesus. We declare, we proclaim that there will be no life threatening situation against you or them that concerns you in the name of Jesus. Life threatening situation, life and death situation, be a curse, 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 be a curse. And now, in the name of Jesus, we bind every life threatening situation. We bind every life threatening situation. We curse any life and death situation program against you during this COVID 19. And after, in the name of Jesus, let life threatening situation, let life and death situation program against you within your walls, where you go out, where you come in, no matter where you go, in the name of Jesus. Be safe. We command your safety. We command your protection. Command your safety. Command your protection. Command your deliverance. But in the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. Wherever you go, you shall be protected. Within or without, be protected. Be preserved. If you're going out, if you're coming in, be delivered. Be delivered. You and your house, you and your family, you and your loved ones, holding up. On the account of the blood of Jesus, we command deliverances, deliverances, deliverances from life threatening situation in the name of Jesus. Command deliverances, command deliverances, command deliverances, command deliverances, we command deliverances, deliverance from death, deliverance from tears, deliverance from falling, deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we command deliverances on every side, on every front, on every level. We command deliverances on the account of the blood of Jesus. Let there be deliverance from life to every situation. Now let there be deliverance from the expectation and from the projection and wishes of those who devise our head. There are people who want to see us in pain. There are people who are waiting to see tears in our eyes. They want us to cry, but let it turn on them. Let that wish boomerang. Let that wish be overturned on the account of the blood of Jesus. We override their wishes. We override their projections. We override their expectations. We override their claims and their demands on our lives, on the lives of our children and our household and our loved ones and them that concerns us. Let their expectation be a curse. Let their projections be a curse. Let their demands be a curse. Let their wishes be a curse. Let their claims be a curse in the name of Jesus and let it be overturned on the account of the blood of Jesus. We overturn it. We overturn it. Overturn it. Overturn. 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 Overturn it. In the name of Jesus, we overturn it. Now, we dismiss the voice of the accuser. We dismiss any accusation. We dismiss guilt. We dismiss accusation. We dismiss technicalities. We dismiss legality. We dismiss complications on the account of the blood. On the account of the blood of Jesus. We silence the voice of the accuser. We silence the voice of the adversary on the account of the blood of Jesus. For the Bible says, he accuses the brethren day and night, day and night. Anyone accusing us day and night, day and night, on the account of the blood of Jesus, we silence them in the name of Jesus. Let them be silenced in the name of Jesus. The voices that goes around accusing us in high places, accusing us in town, accusing us in the land, 
in the spirit. Let them be silenced on the account of the blood of Jesus. Let them be silenced. Let them be silenced. Let them be silenced on the account of the blood of Jesus. Let them be silenced. Kuta Mahasa. Makuta Malas. Lekutula Bakitala. Eyaluma Kadili Kasaha. Muyanda La Fada. Etula Sit. Alindu Sant. Dana Kuvand. Helia Wanda. Shonavadi Kayant. Ila Paris Tando Satisis. He lost to Kandi Satas. Laya Tando La Fasida. I malakuwa in la handas, e itakumba la hadaka, e la karahada dufi, le kuta li kadif, peruta ki in santa, mandi kaluhabada. As we continue in prayer, I want you to know that these are the days of corporate prayers. That is what it will require. And so I want to encourage you. Three people pray together. Observe all the protocol. Use your face mask and all the other protocol. Five people observe the protocols. Pray together. Ten people observe the protocol eh, and pray together. Fifteen people, twenty people, twenty-five people, thirty people, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, more, up to hundred. Break up here and there, but don't stand alone. Don't stand alone. Pray with others. Stand with others in the gap, for we are dealing with legions of demons. Legions. They are on the loose everywhere, and it's going to take corporate prayers of the brethren, the church, the saints, to rely them. Not individual prayers. Individual prayers is great, but you're going to need more than that. For even individuals to survive each day you need to pray more than one hour. You need to pray more than once. You can't just pray some 30 minutes and one hour and think you've done it. No, your temple, listen, the water level will fall. It will fall. The level of your faith and anointing will come down. Discouragement and frustration will hit you because the times we live in, there are all kinds of demons on the loose that are working 24-7 around the clock to get at us, to get at us. So you can't just pray 30 minutes, one hour, and think you've done well. No, 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 no. You need to pray 10 minutes here, some 5 minutes there, some 20 minutes there, some 1 hour there, some 30 minutes there. At least 3, 4 times a day, you got to make up your mind if you are going to survive in these evil times we live in, you got to pray more than two, three times a day, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's going to take that. It's going to take that for you to stand as an individual and then to override what's going on. You need to connect with the church. You need to connect with the brethren. These are the days of corporate praying. The Bible said when Peter and John was let go, when they were let go, Acts chapter 4, verse 23, and 24, the Bible said they went to the brethren. They went to their own company. They went to the church. And they prayed corporate prayer. They told them everything that the chief priest and the elders have said unto them. And the Bible said when they had it, they lifted up. They lifted up their voice in one accord or with one accord. They, not an individual, as, as, as anointed and gifted as John and Peter was, that these people worked miracles, raised the dead, because a man born crippled from his mother's womb to rise up at the gate called beautiful to walk. Notwithstanding that, they understood that what they were dealing with required more than just giftings and anointing. That it was going to, it was, it was going to take more than just gifts and anointing, that it required corporate prayer and the prayers of the church and the brethren. So they went to their own company. These are the days. These are the days to connect with others. These are the days to pray with the body, pray with the church, pray with others. Don't stand alone. 
We broke the thunders. Let's connect. Let's connect all over the nations of the world. Let's lift up prayers right now in the name of Jesus. And let's override this wickedness. Let's override the wickedness. This is wickedness. Let's override the wickedness responsible for what's going on. We bind the beast responsible for what's going on in the name of Jesus, in our lives, in our families, in the lives of our children, in the lives of our sons, our daughters, our wives, our husbands, in the name of Jesus and our loved ones, we bind the enemy. Let them be bound and let our families be loose. Let them be loose and release in the name of Jesus. These are the days of corporate prayers. I'm telling you. What we're dealing with is going to take more than just your prayer and my prayer. It's going to require us praying together. And we have to be determined to do this on daily basis, without ceasing. We cannot relent because what we are dealing with is not going to relent. It's determined to destroy lives. But in the name of Jesus, we cancel every demonic appointment on the account of the blood of Jesus. Let this wickedness come to an end. Let this wickedness come to an end. Let this evil come to an end. Let the threatenings come to an end. Let the intimidation come to an end. Let the conspiracy come to an end. Let the mischief come to an end. On the account of the blood of Jesus, we command the mischief to come to an end. We command the wickedness to come to an end. On the account of the blood of Jesus, let it come to an end. In the name of Jesus, let it come to an end. One thing you must understand, demons don't walk alone. You don't see demons walking alone. They always go in groups. In groups. Where you see the spirit of fear, you see the spirit of torment also there. Yeah. You see the spirit of torment. You see anger. When you see, whenever you see anger, you see violence. And then you see threatening. And death. They all go together. They work together. And we cannot stand alone. We cannot do it alone. You can't continue to stay home in the name of fear. Because this thing can get you no matter where you are hiding and no matter where you are. It takes you connecting with the brethren, being part of the prayer force, being part of the prayer team and the prayer force, acknowledging and following all the protocols, but you got to be part of the prayer force. You got to be part of the brethren, part of the church. You can't stand alone. You can't do it alone. And so in the name of Jesus, Right now, in the name of Jesus, we, we take authority on the account of the blood of Jesus. We override the wickedness. We override the hand of the enemy. We override the wickedness and the hand of the enemy that the enemy will not have the upper hand. The enemy will not have the upper hand. Psalm 74 and 13, we want to crush the head of the serpent. We want to crush the head of Leviathan. We want to crush the head of the dragon that lies in the waters. That lies in the waters. This is the beast behind this COVID-19. It's a wicked beast that is out to kill and to destroy people. But in the name of Jesus, by the sword of the Lord, by the sword of Yahweh, the God of the armies of Israel, on the account of the blood of Jesus, we crush the head. We crush the head of the dragon. 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 In the name of Jesus. We crush the head of the dragon. Malaya Tusa. Thou has broken. In a kutaba. Matila Brando Sanda. Let it be broken in pieces. Let the head of the dragon be broken in pieces. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let him become meat, meat for us, in the name of Jesus. Let the head of the dragon be crushed, in the name of Jesus, by the sword of the vengeance of our God. 
on the account of the blood of Jesus. Let the head of the dragon be crushed, be crushed, be crushed, 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 crushed. Let it be crushed in the name of Jesus. We crush the head of the dragon. Metunaki sana, mekutani sana, and we cut the tail. We crush the head and cut the tail. 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 And we cut it into pieces. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now may you be preserved. May you be preserved. And I pray that nobody that concerns us will be a victim. We decree on the account of the blood of Jesus that we and our house will not be victims. That there will be no casualties within our walls. That there will be no victims or casualties within our walls. Etula Mahatisis. Makayaka Dila Hasa. Amandila Kuala Hasis. Hey to Kalabahan, the bandili ki vadus, meiki dawahan, hey akutala hasia. And now we declare, in the name of Jesus, that any opening the enemy has around us, or any loved one of us, to access us, in the name of Jesus, with COVID-19, we block it on the account of the blood. Of oh, Jesus, we block it now. We block it now. We block it now. We block them now. We block that opening. We block that access. We block that opening. We block that access. We block that opening. We block that access. Any spirit of rebellion and any spirit of pride and arrogance. And any spirit of lawlessness that is working around town and working around even people around us, that people are desensitized and veiled to become weapons and vehicles and instruments in the hands of the enemy to hurt others. In the name of Jesus, we bind any such activity. We bind any such activity. We bind all these demons on the loose, influencing people to do the wrong thing. Let them be bound in the name of Jesus. Let them be bound in the name of Jesus. Let them be bound in the name of Jesus. Let them be bound in the name of Jesus. Let them be bound in the name of Jesus. Bow. Karuda Hasid. Atila Kufasidas. Mela Kuba Lahandibas. Le Fakunda Lawaha. Yaya Kuba Lisia. Imayanda La Kuba Handi. Ye to Kadim Babazumba La Gadi Wasa. Isaya Kunde Le Sivaya. Vuda Akudam Bida Luta. Hey to Kadahanda, my Yahanda Kunawa Hadia, Yei Kuahali Asindi Mata, Kofasinu Kadahaba, Yamutunda Wala Hakumba, Hey Yakumbi Litayandua, Sidilia Kunda Wasi, Say to Kandi Yanda, Sanda Malahan, Ilaya Kundi Vaya, Hey to Lawahaka, Ikoya Tundi Bikaya. In the name of Jesus. Right now, we will ride. We will ride the threatenings. We will ride the ill wills. We will ride the intimidations. Yea, we will ride. In the name of Jesus, every mockery, let it be a curse. We curse mockery. We curse threatening. We curse intimidation. By the curse of God, we curse right now every ill wills and projections and manipulations of the powers of the darkness. Let it be a curse 
and bound in the name of Jesus. And right now, we command and decree a divine recovery of our stolen goods. We recover our stolen goods, our stolen goods, our stolen goods, our stolen goods. We bind the scatterer. We bind the scatterer. We bind the waster. We bind the scatterer. We bind the waster. In the name of Jesus, we bind any robbery. We bind spiritual and robbers. We bind them that in the name of Jesus, we will not be robbed anymore. We will not be wasted anymore. We will not be scattered anymore. Let the scatterer be bound in the name of Jesus. Let the waster be bound in the name of Jesus. And now we command a recovery of our stolen goods. A recovery and a return of our stolen goods. A recovery and a return of our sons and of our daughters, of our husbands, of our wives, of our loved ones. We decree on the account of the blood of Jesus, let there be a return and a recovery of all that the enemy has robbed us of over the years. Every blessing of ours scattered, wasted, we command, we demand on the account of the blood of Jesus, a return and a recovery, 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 a return and a recovery of all. In the name of Jesus, command it now. Open your mouth and command a recovery and a return of every stolen goods, of every blessing scattered, of every blessing wasted. Let there be a recovery and a return of our sons, of our daughters, our stolen goods, our possessions, our treasures, in the name of Jesus and our fortunes. Let there be a recovery and a return of our lost fortunes, of our treasures, of our possessions, by the hand of the Lord, on the account of the blood of Jesus, by the sword of the Lord. Let there be a divine recovery. We command the hunters. Jeremiah 16, 16. Let the hunters of God go to work. Let the hunters and the fishermen go to work. Let them hunt and fish them out. Wherever they are hiding. In the hills, the valleys, the rocks, the holes, the mountains. Let them fish them out. Let the fishermen and the hunters go to work. Go to work. And let them return our fortunes. Return our fortunes. Return our sons. Return our daughters. Return our blessings. Return our divine helpers. Return our household. Return our churches. Return our churches. We command a divine recovery and return. In the name of Jesus, let there be a divine recovery and a return. I need for you to enforce these scriptures and stay connected with the brethren. Stay connected. Be part of the prayer movement. Be part of the prayer force. Don't stand alone. It's dangerous to stand alone. And it doesn't matter how gifted and anointed you are. Two shall put 10,000 to flight. Two put 10,000 to flight. One shall put 1,000 to flight. Samson was very anointed. A mighty warrior. He could kill lions with his bare hands. But he died alone. And he died with his enemy. He died prematurely. Because he depended on his strength. His anointing, his gifting. And he's intelligent. He was very intelligent, something. And that was how he got destroyed. I pray for you that you will not stand alone. That you will connect with the brethren. You connect with the church. You continue to be part of the body in everything. That you continue to release your seed. You continue to be a giver, a tighter. You continue to fast, continue to pray. And join the fellowship of the brethren. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we are fellowship one with another. Don't break away from the fellowship of the brethren because of fear. 
The Bible says anything that is done without faith is sin. Don't, 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 break, don't break away from the fellowship of the brethren. Stay connected to the fellowship of the brethren. 1 John 5, 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with the brethren. And the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from all sin, you know. So let's, let's, let's walk in the light. Let's have fellowship one with another. Fellowship one with another. Fellowship is important. The enemy wants to break our fellowship with fear. He wants to break our fellowship with unbelief, with doubt, with threatenings and intimidation. He wants to break our fellowship with the fear of death. But in the name of Jesus, let it be a curse. Let the conspiracy be a curse. Let the mystery be a curse. And let the one behind it be bound in the name of Jesus. Bound in the name of Jesus. We lose our fellowship. We lose our fellowship. One with another. In the name of Jesus. We will not break fellowship. One with another. For if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. In the name of Jesus. I, I, I take divine immunity on the account of the blood of Jesus to, to insulate you and your family and your loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ let God plead our cause with them that strive with us oh Lord plead our cause with them that strive with us plead our cause with them who desire our hurt and the hurt of our sons and our daughters those who desire the hurt of our household and our loved ones and our divine helpers let the hand of the Lord be against them. Let the hand of the Lord be against them. Let the hand of the Lord strike them. In the name of Jesus, by day and by night, let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Let the angel of the Lord trouble them that trouble us. In the name of Jesus. Continue praying. Stay connected with my team till I come back to you again. In the name of Jesus. Remember it is said that fear is a reaction. But courage is a decision. So be courageous. It is said again that success is not final. So to those of you who think you've made it, big time, time changes. It doesn't matter what position you hold in life and how much you have and you think you've made it. You are so successful. You hold grudges and bitterness and unforgiveness against people. And you want to help people and show them where power lies waiting for an opportunity to settle scores with people, the Lord will disappoint your expectation. The Lord will disappoint your expectation. But if you walk in love, God will honor you. If you walk in love, he will honor you. So in the name of Jesus, success is not, success is not final. And failure is not fatal. But it is the courage to continue that counts. So be courageous in Jesus' name. Okay, guys. <laughs>